You wanna know what the greatest lie of 2020 is? I'm gonna tell you. Join me across the table for this episode as we talk about what you are hearing that is not true in 2020. Greatest lie of 2020? What is it? You could probably think there's multiple, especially in the political season that we are in, but here's the truth, or here's here's the lie that everybody is believing. That you are alone. That you are alone. Think about it. Right now, more than ever, more than ever, there's so much division in beliefs. You feel like you're alone in your own beliefs. This is the first time ever to where hugging grandma and hugging grandpa is completely frowned upon. You can't even connect with them. This is the first time that nursing homes and senior living centers have had to be isolated more than ever. Never have we ever had to communicate at a distance. Think about it, the six feet margin. We've never, that's like the worst for me. I'm a hugger. I, I'm a, I like to connect. I like to shake hands. But now communication happens at a distance. Never have we ever had to felt like we're alone really in our own in our own thoughts and beliefs, but really even where we are when we view different things or going to events, we now view events alone in a room by ourselves. We attend church online by ourselves. But I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. Even though it may feel like you're alone, even though you may believe that you're alone, I wanna communicate today that this is a lie. You see, believers and God's people, you, even if you don't believe in God, you know how you are created? We were created to be together. From the very start of the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. This is the creation of Adam and the creation of Eve. Together is ingrained in our creation. It's ingrained in who we are. Loneliness, I want to tell you, is a perspective. Loneliness is a perspective. We believe it. We believe that loneliness is uh, is really where we are in our stage of life, is really where we are in the season. But I want to tell you that you just have a viewpoint that you are alone, that you have a perspective right now that you are alone. And I want to combat that with truth. I want to combat the loneliness lie with truth. I want you to change your perspective, fill your thoughts with truth that you are not alone. How am I going to do this? I want to do this by using God's word. So the first truth, the first truth that you need to hear that you are not alone. How do I know you're not alone? Because of this first truth, God is with you. Isaiah 41 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the first and foremost, the most important truth that you need to hear that God is with you. The second one, the spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Romans 8, 14 through 16, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit, Scripture tells us, dwells inside of you and inside of me. And I want to tell you this last truth. How do I know you're not alone? Because somebody is with you. Someone is with you. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Someone is around you. If God truly believes that we were not meant to be alone, that he has given both his presence and his spirit to be with us, but he also is ingrained in us that together is important. Someone right now is close to you that God wants you to connect with. Now, it doesn't have to be in person. It can still happen virtually, but it's the connection that matters. And I want to tell you, one of the easiest way to have someone in your life, the easiest way is to be someone for someone else. So you may be feeling like you're alone. You know what probably somebody else is feeling? Like they're alone. So how do you be that someone for them? You send them a text message. You have them a phone call. Maybe it's a Zoom. Maybe it's a FaceTime. Or maybe it's actually meeting in person and saying, hey, how are you? So you flipping the script to have your focus not on you and your loneliness, but on others' loneliness that they may be experiencing. What you'll get 
is a feeling that you've been longing for for such a long time, the feeling of connection. So by having your mind geared on others, on being that someone for someone else, what you find in return is that someone. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So I wanna encourage you, for this season, cling to the truth that comes from God's word. Fight for community with God and community with others. Don't let the lie of loneliness trap you in a feeling that you are lonely. God is with you. The Spirit dwells within you. And believers 